Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to second semester. We are starting this semester with chapter seven. This video is going to be a little bit on the longer side because we're doing two sections. We're doing both sections one and two. One is review. It's applying the Pythagorean theorem. You guys have already done that this year and you did it last year. And then we are also going to use the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. Two objectives for this video. First, we are going to calculate the missing sides in a right triangle using the Pythagorean theorem. And then we are also going to classify triangles using the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. So we should probably start with, what is the Pythagorean theorem? So the Pythagorean theorem says, in a right triangle, leg 1 squared, add leg 2 squared, is equal to the hypotenuse squared. The other way that you've probably seen this is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And what you have to remember is that c is the hypotenuse. Okay, what's really, really important about the Pythagorean theorem is this only applies to right triangles. We only use the Pythagorean theorem in right triangles. So let's look at the examples that we have. Example 1 it says, well, examples 1 and 2. It says, find the values of x and y in the figures below. So I'm going to do example 1 with you, and then you're going to do example 2. So we know that Pythagorean theorem is only for right triangles. Well, I have a right triangle, so I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem. It's a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Okay, c is the most important one, the hypotenuse, which is across from the right angle. So in our case, c is going to be x, so I have x squared. A and B, then, are the two legs, so 5 and 10. I'm going to choose 5 to be A and 10 to be B, but those can be interchanged. So I have 5 squared, add 10 squared, equals X squared. 5 squared is 25. 10 squared is 100, and then I have X squared. This simplifies to 125 equals X squared. To get rid of the squared, I have to take a square root, and now I have to break down that 125. Uh, you are not allowed to leave this as a decimal. So 125 is 25 times 5. 25 is 5 and 5. So I have a pair of 5s and one 5 left over. So one of the 5s comes out of the pair, and then this 5 that's left over goes under the root. So in this case, x is 5 root 5, and then it's centimeters. Okay, so we've done that. Hopefully that's a little bit of review. Right now, take a minute, pause the video, and do the ex second example, this one right here, on the right on your own. Okay, you should have had enough, chance, enough time to try this one on your own. And sorry to tell you, this problem is impossible. I'm going to guess most of you try to use the Pythagorean Theorem. But this is not a right triangle, or we do not know that it's a right triangle, so we cannot use the Pythagorean Theorem. So hopefully you saw that. Okay, so we have two more examples on this page before moving on. Example 3 says, Calculate the length of the hypotenuse of a right triangle with legs of 2 root 3 and 4 inches. So I'm going to do example 3 with you. You're going to do example 4 on your own. Example 3. Okay, so calculate the length of the hypotenuse of a right triangle. So I'm going to draw myself a right triangle. I'm calculating the hypotenuse, so I'm going to call that x. It says the legs are 2 root 3 and 4. Second thought, I want you to do this one on your own. Pause the video and try setting the problem up, please. Okay, let's see how we did. We have a squared plus b squared equals c squared. c is the hypotenuse, which in this case is x. So I'm going to have 4 squared add 2 root 3 squared equals x squared. 4 squared is 16. Okay, 2 root 3 squared, that's 2 root 3 multiplied by 2 root 3. Okay, so 16 plus... 2 multiplied by 2 is 4. Root 3 and root 3 is root 9, which is just 3. OK, 
Okay, so I end up with 16 add 12 equals x squared. So 28 equals x squared. Take the root. 28 is 4 multiplied by 7. 4 is 2 and 2. So I have a pair of 2's and a 7 left over. So in this case, my hypotenuse is 2 root 7 inches. The 2 comes outside because it has a partner. 7 stays under the root because it does not have a partner. Hopefully that one went well for you. I'm guessing if you made any mistake, you did the 2 root 3 squared wrong. You have to remember that you have to square both the 2 and the root 3. That's how we end up with 12. Okay, let's look at example 4. It says calculate the area of an isosceles triangle with legs of 13 feet and a base of 10 feet. Okay, so we've got to remember, what is an isosceles triangle? Well, an isosceles triangle is one that has two legs that are congruent. In this case, which those are 13 and 13. And then the base, which is not congruent, is 10. We are asked to calculate the area. So I have to remember, area of a triangle is 1 half base times height. In this case, our base is 10. But we don't have the height yet. The height is this segment right here. The height is always perpendicular to the base. So we're going to have to find that segment. Well, the height splits this triangle in half since it's isosceles. So my bases become 5 and 5. Right now, use the Pythagorean theorem to find the height and then calculate the area. Good luck. Okay, let's see how we did. So you should have used the Pythagorean theorem to find the height. 5 squared add h squared equals 13 squared. 13 is the hypotenuse because it's across from the right angle. We end up with h squared equals 144, and hence the height is 12. Remember that we were asked to calculate the area, so 12 needs to be substituted in. You then get the area to be 60 feet squared. Remember that it is feet squared because we're talking area. Hopefully that went well. If not, hopefully we now know what mistake we made. Okay, flip the page, please. And now we are moving on to the last problem of section one, which is a word problem, and then we're going to go on to section two. So the word problem says, a 39-foot ladder rests against the side of the house. The base of the ladder is 15 feet away from the house. How high above the ground is the top of the ladder? Okay, so let's start by drawing ourselves a picture. Well, it's talking about a house. So we have some house here. Okay, then it says a 39-foot ladder rests against the side of the house. So our ladder, something like this. Okay, using that information, label the figure and answer the question, please. Good luck. Okay, so you should have gotten the top of the ladder is 36 feet high. When you come to class tomorrow, I'm going to be making sure that you have all of the work to support the correct answer. So if you got that wrong, you need to pause the video right now and fix it. If you didn't do the problem, you need to pause the video and fix it. Okay, moving on. That was all the Pythagorean theorem. Now we're talking about the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. Remember that the converse just means flip. So take the statement that you have and then you flip it. We're using the converse of the Pythagorean theorem in order to classify triangles. So first we need to do a little review in example one. It says, is it possible to form a triangle with side lengths of one millimeter, two millimeter, and three millimeter? Hopefully you remember from last chapter, it's possible to form a triangle if the sum of two sides is greater than the third. So 1 add 2 has to be greater than 3. 1 add 3 has to be greater than 2. 2 add 3 has to be greater than 1. Okay, 1 add 2 being greater than 3. No, that's not true. So is it possible? No. Not possible. The reason that we're reviewing this is because in this chapter, you're going to be asked, is it possible to form the triangle? 
and then classify it. So we always have to make sure that the triangle is possible before we can classify it. You can't classify a triangle that doesn't exist. Okay. And now on to the classifying part. So there's three possibilities for the side links. You can have a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. You can have a squared plus b squared is greater than c squared. And you could have a squared plus b squared is less than c squared. In this case, c is the largest side. Largest or longest. Okay, if a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, well, we just talked about that. That's a right triangle. C is the longest side across the right angle. A and B are the other two sides. Now the next two are the special cases. If A squared plus B squared is greater than C squared, we notice that C squared is less, so C got smaller. So it's a, as if you take a right triangle and you make C a little bit smaller. So in this case, A and B stayed about the same. C got smaller. If C gets smaller, the right angle also gets smaller. So this is an acute triangle. The last one, a squared plus b squared is less than c squared. Well, in this case, c squared got bigger. So if c gets bigger, the right angle also gets bigger. This is an obtuse triangle. So I know that's a little confusing at first. Um, we'll talk about it a little more in class, but let's try to do some examples. Okay, I think the examples are on the next page. Okay, so we have examples two and three. It says, for the following side lengths, determine if it is possible to form a triangle. If it is, determine the type of triangle. Okay, so first we're going to start with, is it possible? Okay, so we have 5, 6, and root 61. I don't know what that is exactly, so I'm going to do it in my calculator. Okay, so root 61 is about, sorry, it's about 7.8. Okay, so is it possible? Well, is 5 add 6 greater than 7.8? Yes. Is 5 add 7.8 greater than 6? Yes. Is 6 add 7.8 greater than 5? Yes. So any two sides added together are greater than the third side. Now I need to classify it. So I need to calculate a squared plus b squared, and then I need to calculate c squared. a squared plus b squared is going to be 5 squared add 6 squared. So this is 25 add 36, which is 61 c squared is root 61 squared, which is 61. So in this case, I have a squared plus b squared equals c squared, which we should know is a right triangle. Okay, you try example number three, please. So try the example to the right. Good luck. Okay, let's see how we did. Is it possible to form the triangle? Well, 6.1 add 5.2 is certainly greater than 4.3. 6.1 add 4.3 is definitely greater than 5.2. And 4.3 add 5.2 is definitely greater than 6.1. So yes, it's possible. Now we need to classify the triangle. So we have a squared plus b squared, and then we have c squared. Please remember that C is the bigger side, or the biggest side, which in this case is 6.1. So that's going to be 6.1 squared, which is 37.21. A squared plus B squared is going to be 4.3 squared add 5.2 squared, which in this case is 45.53. Okay, 45.53 is greater than 37.21. So I know a squared plus b squared is greater than c squared. 
In this case, c squared is less, so c squared got smaller. If c got smaller, the right angle got smaller. So this is an acute triangle. This is an acute triangle. So hopefully that one went well for you, and hopefully you um, looked at your notes to make sure that you did this correctly. So that's the end of notes for 7, 1, and 7, 2. We do have one last example for you to do. So did we accomplish the objectives? The first thing that we did is we calculated the missing side in a right triangle using the Pythagorean theorem. That was section 7.1. We also then classified triangles using the converse. So that's what we just did. Your last example is another classifying example. So it says to classify the triangle with side lengths of 2 root 3, 10, and 4 root 5. When you come to class tomorrow, I will be checking to see that you have this example completed. If you don't, you will not receive credit. See you tomorrow.